Hey yeah, welcome again to Steels Unleashed to the Max, where I get, well, it's basically documenting me trying to get the most out of these more budget steels. So this is a Kershaw Atmos Dmitry Sinkovich. Uh, this was already a really good slicing knife, has a really thin hollow grind, and came with an edge bevel of about 18 degrees per side. That's what my kind of Tormek sort of measured it at before I started viciously removing stock. That's right. I took this knife, now it has a 12 degree per side V grind bevel with a very slight polished micro convex. A very slight. I know, right? I'm fucking crazy. Oh, he's a madman! A madman! Um, but yeah, there's a, um, you know, there's a risk that when you take your angles like that, they may just fail when they try and cut things. I'm pretty confident with this one. I don't know, I reckon these steels are more ductile than you'd, you'd hope, and I reckon they got a bit of, bit of give in them. I don't know if I'd want to go much lower than this. This is a pretty tall bevel for a hollow ground knife. I'll show you some before photos, and now some after footage of it. And as you see, it did add a couple of mils to that, um, that bevel there. So anyway, what we're going to do, it obviously is very, very sharp right now. I'll find some tape that hasn't been tacked to bits. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, the rope until it no longer does that anymore. So one of the sharper knives I've had, whew, it almost just cuts your skin when you try and do a hair shave. One of the sharper knives I've had, we're going to see how it goes when we unleash it to the max. One thirty-five on the uh, 8CR13 MOV steel. Too close. Yeah, as showed before with the AOS8, um, you get a fair extension of longevity, and this is still like a lot of that is done. I reckon a lot of the push pushing through is done with the thinness of the knife, um, and it is still not dull. Like I reckon I could even. Look, I can still get it to pop a few hairs. It's just, it's got a couple of, and maybe this is how these edges degrade. I'm kind of just working this out on my own too. It's just got a couple of catch parts. So say on the two inches or so, or the inch and a half or so that I'm using, it's got a couple of catch parts. You see there what it just did. Um, get this to focus. It just gave it this, this little ridge in there, so it's just got a few catch parts like that, or maybe one or two. And when I look at the edge up against the light, there are, it's where it's kind of rolled over eventually. Interesting what might do that. Yes, it may well be the rope or the cutting board. Maybe as the knife still heats up as I cut repeatedly, it becomes more malleable to bending or folding as well, because yes, so that is what is going on. But yeah, I mean, 135 cuts before that happens, and I mean, I'm cutting like a bloody you know, uh, Energizer Bunny. So very, very, you know, not particularly, um, uh, not really a simulation of a real, uh, real world cutting in terms of the motion and the, well, not the motion, but the motion's probably fine, but in terms of the sheer repetition of it, really is just to get numbers. So anyway, interesting food for thought. 135 with AOS 8, not AOS 8, 8 CR13 MOV. I mean, that's a ridiculous improvement over what, say, a 20 degree bevel or hell, whatever any of your factory edges get. The factory edge of this one tested at about 40, I think. Workshop was to about mid 50s. I, I re, you have to check the review, or I'll have to check the review or whatever. But um, yes, uh, edge extension definitely, but with some risk of 
rolling over eventually, by the looks of it. But it took 135 times, so let me too fast. And you know what? Rolling over, let's see if it passes the fixing test, shall we? <laughs> Realistically, each time you do that, you're probably making the micro convex just a tad more severe, but you know, that's fine. I'll just make sure I get all the schmutz off. Let's see how that fared. <laughs> cool, huh? Very, very cool indeed. And that's, that's with the part that was being used. So. You know what, there's a lot to be said for cheaper steels and stropping, don't you reckon? Anyway, I still love my super steels, of course. You know what, I just kind of love the num the numbers and the capabilities of it all. I've, I'm gradually beginning to realize that about myself. I think I'm just enjoying this whole process and just the exploration more than anything. As much as I revere the Rex 121s of the world, there's something special in that as well, surely. Anyway guys, you have a nice one, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>